Welcome all to our eShip Summit presentation, um, Borrowing Tools from Public Libraries to Build Equitable Ecosystems. Um, I'm Betsy Sushanik. I'm a program manager at the Urban Libraries Council, alongside Leander Croker, the business services manager from Durham County Library, and Morgan Perry, the business outreach specialist from Mid-Continent Public Library. Today I'll be sharing about the Urban Libraries Count the Urban Libraries Council's Strengthening Libraries as Entrepreneurial Hubs Initiative. And Leander and Morgan will be sharing about their pro library programs, which participate in our cohort. The Urban Libraries Council is a membership association of North America's leading public library systems, large urban library systems across the United States and Canada. Through our 161 member libraries, we've developed networks and strategic partnerships across three areas, education, digital equity, and healthy, sustainable communities. So before I jump in any further um, in the chat, if you guys wouldn't mind saying what comes to your mind immediately when you think of a public library. Resources, it's a good one. <laughs> a great place to visit, another one. Yes, the welcoming environment, free internet, <laughs> digital gold mine, kids. I like that one, Morgan, books. Books, yes. So whenever, a lot of times when we talk about libraries, immediately everyone talks about books. And so you guys are already leap years ahead in that you recognize that libraries do so much more than just books. Um, so typically when you say public library, people think of books or free internet. And so within our work around healthy, sustainable communities, in 2018, we began a partnership with the Kauffman Foundation to look at the role that public libraries play in reducing access barriers for entrepreneurs. The reality is that in addition to books and all of the other things that immediately come to mind when we think about libraries, public libraries are essential community anchors. They have branch facilities and strategic locations. They're viewed with an incredibly high level of trust in the community. And at their core, they're a truly public space with public and free resources for all community members. And that's made them champions of equity, inclusivity, and opportunity in the community. So in addition to the role that they play, they also have a significant number of assets within them. From guidance and trusted information from business librarians to space that some could argue where it serves as a co-working space in and of itself, to technology spanning public use computers, to 3D printers, to full-blown maker spaces. So they are well suited to reduce access barriers for entrepreneurs from all backgrounds, but because of their public and free nature, those from low income and other disadvantaged backgrounds are of particular interest in, in being able to benefit from those assets. So it's both of those pieces, the trusted community anchor role and the range of assets that can be used by entrepreneurs that led this initiative, that led to this initiative with the Kauffman Foundation. So it seeks to strengthen the role that public libraries play in nurturing and promoting entrepreneurship in their communities. This work began with an initial national scan of libraries range of work and awareness in entrepreneurship and small business supports. And then in using those findings, it created a cohort of libraries advancing this work. So we brought together 12 public library systems to explore ways that libraries can reach and engage entrepreneurs in their community. Each of these library systems have a specific focused target audience, which spans people of color, women, immigrants or refugees, and justice-involved citizens. Learning from these libraries through in-person convenings and now, unfortunately, online calls, um, we've learned, um, we've, we've developed a toolkit to help public libraries craft programs and services for entrepreneurs. These are, this is, this toolkit's currently being revised and will be re-released later in 2020 with resources that particularly focus on COVID-19 recovery and how libraries have pivoted a lot of their work in response to the pandemic. However, I think the best way to understand the work of the cohort is to hear directly from our cohort participants, which is why I'm so excited for you to hear from Leander and Morgan themselves. So Leander Croker is the Business Services Manager from Durham County Library and will be sharing about her programs and DCL and how they've pivoted in response to the COVID-19 recovery. Okay, hello, I'm Leander Croker again in Durham, North Carolina. And I wanna give you just a little bit of background on Durham County and who we are. 
So Durham County Library is located in North Carolina. We are considered the Silicon Valley of the South in the Triangle. So we have Duke, Chapel Hill, North Carolina Central, NC, um, NC State, and Methodist College really close in our proximity. We have a main library, which is located downtown, which is a brand new build. It is a 98,000 square foot renovation that happened. We have four regional locations, east, north, south, and southwest, to accommodate the corners of our county. We are a county system, but we also serve the city as well. Um, we have a community library with Stanford L. Warren and a neighborhood library, which was actually built by the community of Bragtown, which is a small, cute little house that serves that area. And we also have bookmobiles and a technology mobile that provides internet access and books to the community. So when we started with this project, we figured out what main library would need. So the discussion began right at the beginning of the transformation. We passed a bond referendum in 2016 at 80% voter support, which was amazing for our system. Everyone was ready for the main library to transform and change because like many communities at the time, Durham was seeing a huge surge in people coming in, innovations, buildings going up downtown. And because we are situated downtown, it was time for a facelift. Um, community and staff input was important to specific transformation projects. And one outcome specifically was the entrepreneurial community and how we could support it because there was such a surge in that area. So how we got started. So Durham, Durham County Library closed for what ended up being three years and I was transferred to a maker space in a mall <laughs> that was like many malls kind of on the edge of closing since COVID has hit it is completely closed to the public um, except for some of the anchor stores that were moved to the outside so in that area I was kind of given free reign to do what I wanted to do as long as it met the steam makerspace programming and with that I started doing financial literacy and empowerment workshops and programming geared towards creatives in addition to the steam maker programs so we began the evaluation of community needs space affordability access equity um, evaluation of viability and sustainability and filling the gaps. And what I learned from hosting various programs and workshops in the, in the temporary location is that there wasn't a space in Durham to meet the needs of people to sit, decide whether or not they even wanted to be entrepreneurs. It was either you're an entrepreneur, great, sign this lease in this co-working space for this amount of time that you may or may not have without the actual support of well, I don't necessarily fit in. We have a great co-working space called the American Underground, which everyone always refers to in our community, but it's mainly for people who are techs. If you are not tech-based, you cannot have a space in that area, and so therefore you don't have support. And then we have a free space, which is called the Frontier, which is about 15 minutes outside of downtown, so you're not centrally located to what's happening and what's going on, and it's very noisy. It's kind of a free open space, and you just kind of sit down, reserve a spot, and you can kind of reserve a room so it doesn't actually meet the needs of those who I don't know what to do. So that's where we saw that we could fill this gap. Let me get to the next side. Um, so with that, we decided to have a incubation co-working space housed in the Transform Library. So we decided it was gonna be centrally located. It's walkable, even though we're not in the middle of downtown, we're off to the side. So we're about a four to five minute walk from anything that's available to you downtown. Um, we have access to technology, printers, Wi-Fi, computer, AV equipment. In our new transform building, every single room is equipped with digital screens. Um, you can Zoom call from there in those spaces and it's amazing. So we wanted to make sure there was a designated area for community members to feel like I can come here, I can ask the business services librarian what they need, who do I need to talk to. We've established connections with the city and the county to start paperwork to making sure that your business is viable in, in the county, city county limits and what they require. Um, the benefits of a library as an entrepreneurial hub, the opportunity to access space without the high cost, a for-profit co-working space, a reading traditional office space dedicated staff, which is myself, to help navigate it online and print resources. We specifically have purchased resources for businesses, Statista, to help navigate what they are doing, but they don't have to do that at a cost to them. 
um, access to subscription-based resource center at no cost, um, and workshops designated to directly address some of the issues startups may have. All of my workshops that I've created over the past three years have been direct impact of, I'm sorry, have been directly based on what their needs are. It's, I need a one-page business plan. How do I go in and talk to a bank about a loan? I now have to reevaluate my secession plan. What do I need to do? And so we bring people in based on what their specific needs are. So our partnerships. It was important for us as a library to partner, partner with, with intentional programming, <laughs> intentional partners to help build recognition, utilize their built-in audience because people didn't really look at Durham County Library as a, face for, as a space for entrepreneurs when we started. And we needed subject matter experts. I say librarians don't know everything, we know how to find everything. So bringing, bringing in these specialized individuals really helped people realize, oh, well, Leander might not know, but I know the banker at bb and knows. I know the city manager knows. I know the Office of Workforce and Economic Development liaison is there for me. And we, extend, and we expanded access to establish entrepreneurial ecosystems based on that. Because many people who come to me are too nervous to go in to the free workshops that are being held at the underground because they don't necessarily fit into the look of what they see of the young, hip, people who are down there who have it all together. They're like, I just need to know. So these partners have been great and an integral part of our business. And based on these partnerships and programs, I've been able to, to receive a $75,000 grant from the Truist, now, uh, SunTrust Now Truist Found, Lighting the Way Foundation to help support all of our programming that we had going on. I am a, person, a party of one as of right now that did over 35 entrepreneur-based programs in about a year and a half in my temporary location, which in the mall, there was not a lot of, <laughs> there was no foot traffic for stores. So people were liter literally making an effort to come out there just to see what we had. We sponsored lunch and learns, where we would provide lunches, people come in on lunch break to talk about things. We had all day summits with um, the Durham SBTDC, branches of Dur at Durham Tech, which is our local community college, to host their events there to see that the library is part of that ecosystem. So we were ready, we got our $75,000, we're ready to go, and then COVID happened. We have not technically opened up our um, flagship main branch because we were finishing up renovations and scheduled to open on National Library Day in April. So we shut down completely, which also halted in March, which halted some of the finishing touches that happened to this library location. So I had $75,000 and I could not host any programs that I felt comfortable paying the amount of money to. Um, I am on the Small Business Advisory Task Force Committee for COVID relief. And in that meeting, I was hearing the concerns that people were having when it came to PPP loans, when it came to bills that were piling up because we, Durham, Durham County and the state of North Carolina shut down everything pretty quickly. We were open literally on a Monday, restaurants closed on Thursday. Um, so with that, I decided to go to SunTrust and ask if I could take $30,000 to create micro grants that can be just given to, not just given, <laughs> but can be used for businesses that are in the city county limits of Durham to address the needs that they need. Um, we've had, I've served on boards where we're seeing that people can't afford the loan payback that comes with the PPP, that some of the grant funds that are available, they don't need that much money. I've seen where people say, I need $500 to pay off our phone bill that we had in this space and to go for it. And that's where the micro grant comes in. So this is a Durham City County based business on entrepreneurs with under 50E. And that's kind of, I chose that number based on the tax breaks that come with over 15 full-time employees. Wonderful, thank you so much, Leander. Um, next, we're going to hear from Morgan Perry, who is the Business Outreach Specialist for Mid-Continent Public Library in Missouri, and she'll be sharing about Square One Small Business Services at the library and how they have pivoted as well in response to the COVID-19 recovery. Thanks, Betsy. Okay, everybody, buckle up, because here we go. Next slide. So the thing about Mid-Continent is we're a library just about 
like any other library, right? We got stuff for kids. You wake up in the morning and when you think about library, what do you think about kids and books? Got it. We're a little bit large. So those of you that have come to eShip before, there's a bunch of people around Kansas City trying to tell you that this is the city of fountains. There's a ton of fountains. We like water art. But here's the deal. This is the city of libraries. So we're talking about one metro five library systems. And what you don't know about libraries is that they're crazy competitive. So Aaron, this is particularly for you who's getting ready to partner up with some libraries. You need to get your communication and your timeline down because we don't work last minute. So our team formed in 2014 out of the need that arose because there just wasn't anyone to go do all the lunch and learns at the Chambers of Commerce. So we serve just in our part of the metro about 18 different chambers and they needed someone to say, hey everybody, this is Reference USA and this is Demographics Now and we've got research and we'll teach you how to engage with it. So they brought together some specialists. I was one of the founding members of that group. And now we've grown, we've grown to six positions. So things are going pretty well. Thank you, Kaufman, for the constant funding. Next slide, please. The thing that we do differently or our guiding principles here um, is that we got in and we were supposed to sit at branches. Typical library, right? Things happen within our four walls. That's how we like it. The thing that's different here is that we looked at the alignment of resources that are available in Kansas City. So if you look at our ecosystem manager, and we have the luxury of doing that, and I understand not everyone has an ecosystem manager, there's about 200 that are active. So in that alignment, because we're good librarians, we were able to identify where the holes are. Instead of asking who's being served, we concentrated on who's not being served. And this is what we came up with. There were no educational opportunities for those who do not succeed in traditional learning environments. And then we looked at the breakdown of that system. Once again, we had to go to that, that ecosystem manager and we said, okay, so who are our Main Street businesses? Turns out they're only 24% of Kansas City small businesses. 70% are micro enterprises. And I bet if you looked at your city's breakdown, it'd be very similar. And no one was concentrating on them. So we all got caught up in that conversation about who's got the most entrepreneurial city in America. And then we started to say, wait, again, wait a minute, guys, it's got to be everybody. It's got to be waste management. We need entrepreneurial mindset style thinking in all the industries. It's not just about the 1% of high growth tech at the top. It's gotta be the food trucks too. So whenever possible, we use entrepreneurs and small businesses to teach those lessons. For those of you that are ESOs, you know this pain. It doesn't matter what you say sometimes, it can be the same thing, but if another small business or entrepreneur says it, it's stronger. We focus on underserved industries like food business and childcare. For those of you that are looking for the thing to help right now, look at childcare because that is where entrepreneurship and workforce development collide and we don't have enough right now. We also deliver mobile service at convenient locations. So that means you're more likely to see me at a coffee shop than you are at a library branch because it's time to take the library into the community. We got there with ebooks. I don't know about your library systems, but mine serves about 1 million a year ebooks, and there are four other ones at play. Why aren't we doing that with other adult services? Let's go past outreach to community engagement. Slide, please. So we knew what was coming. On March 12th, we were perfectly aware that the mayor was going to make stay at home orders go into effect in the next week. We stopped everything that we were doing at 3 p.m. and we made a plan. Now at the bottom here I've put minimal viable solution. Thank you forward cities for that terminology. We knew kind of what we needed to do but the thing we knew the strongest, the thing that was eking out of us is oh my god this is real bad. This is real bad and it's worse for our target customer than it is for Digital Sandbox's target customer. 
because Goldman Sachs had already released a report that PPP was going to leave 70% of Kansas City small businesses without support. We already knew going in. So this is our board. I have not erased it since that day. And what it says on there is that as a team, we have to talk about our feelings because this is going to be real hard. Everybody else at the library is going to get two months off. We thought it was going to be two weeks. Two weeks off and they're not going to work, whereas we're going to work for 14 hours every day. Find an online platform, circle up our partners because we don't do stuff without partners. And then we need to switch our programming categories. So we got these programming categories from Kaufman about four years ago. And instead of focusing on skill building educational opportunities, 70% of the time, we said, first, we got to take care of the mental hygiene because you cannot skill build while your brain is in crisis mode. Next, celebrate the pivot. If I can't see it, chances are I can't be it. We're going to get in there with our partners. We're going to help them out because they're important in this too. So on March 13th, we started to set this in motion. Next slide, please. And then just like you knew we would, we had to pivot our pivot, right? Because here's where we started talking to entrepreneurs and small businesses and saying, what are you feeling right now? So the way libraries work, this is for Aaron again, the way libraries work is that we might be planning six months in advance and it's a big, heavy machine. We do 8,000 programs a year. It's a big, heavy machine and you don't stop the machine. You just don't. So this was a departure. So we went to admin, we talked about proof of concept, we talked about what they're feeling right now. And granted, our admin was just as freaked out as everyone else was. So I had to ask them to think about something outside of their world and they did a great job. We investigated and then amplified what our partners were doing. We made sure the messaging was going up, going out. Um, our Chambers of Commerce has really stepped up and they got that core information out about the government programs and they did a wonderful job. But remember, I got 70% of small businesses that that stuff's not going to help. So we started doing grant writing sessions every Saturday morning and we did them for 12 weeks straight. At this point, we are 71 programs in since mid-March. And those programs might come together in the course of seven or 12 days. We burned it down. And I don't know many people who can say that other than people that are alive right now. They took a system that they were working, that they had grown up in, and then they lit a match and walked away. And the things we have learned from that are the things that we will continue to do because they've made everything better. Everything we produce now is better because of that experience. So what we're doing for the digital divide is we're mailing handouts. We've got things printed and ready at those 31 branches for people to figure out. And it gave us a really great opportunity to double down on our, on our commitment to inclusion because now we've got a shorter timeline. So if you don't know what you want to talk about six months in advance, now we can work together, right? Because it might just be 12 days. Then we got super noisy within our organization and we got very uncomfortable. Next slide, please. So here's why. Here's why we're here today. Public libraries have an institutional legacy of equitable access to information. If you are in a community and you are not working with the library, you need to take another look. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, as you've heard me warn Aaron a couple of times today. I find it difficult to work with the library and I work there. But if you prep and you listen and you try again, it's a powerful partner. It's a powerful partner in the same way it is when you involve different kinds of entrepreneurship in your ecosystem, where it's not just the 1% high growth tech. It's powerful that way. 
because that person that we all want that customer testimonial about from rags to riches, transparency, we all want it. You might find them at the library. So everything we know about children's literature can be applied to your community, what you do every day. Everything we know about access to public health information applies directly to entrepreneurship when it comes to public libraries. We are the information people. It is in our DNA as an organization to share that information. But you might have to convince us of that. So buckle down. Do your homework. We like facts. Bring it. Show us who's in our community because we don't leave our branches, so we might not know. You can email all three of us because we love this work. Thanks, Morgan. I'm going to leave this slide up just for a minute in case anybody wants to copy down our emails. And I'll also throw the emails in the chat. Um, and then, um, but we want to open it up for questions. Um, and I know we've had a few come in already. So I will, I will let us have some of those conversations. Great. So there is a question here as I'm scrolling up here from Erin. It says, we are looking to partner with libraries over a multi-county area to be distribution partners. Uh, would you care to share some lessons learned there? Thank you. And I know that maybe perhaps you said you were addressing that already, Morgan, but if you want to go any deeper or any other participants want to share more about that, I welcome that. And then after that, I think we can actually unmute our mics and anybody who has a question, feel free to unmute and just interact openly with our panelists. We have about 15 minutes and I would really encourage any other ecosystem builders here who are on uh, the on the call who have questions about how to interact or what the potential of working with public libraries to really get the full benefit of talking with our panelists today. So back to that question there. Um, from Erin, we are looking to partner with libraries. Um, how would you, what would you share some lessons learned about uh, partners in training and other content mentoring plus meeting spaces? Uh, I'm gonna let Morgan answer this one too because she does serve multiple counties. And so I think she would also have some good insights, so. Uh, yeah, have lots of conversations about this before you have the conversation about this. And uh, libraries, particularly those that really strongly come under that government umbrella, uh, they need extra information. And I know Leander's got good stuff about that too. Um, but you wanna give yourself a huge runway with this, huge. The great news is, is that we are all paying attention to entrepreneurship right now. Now is a fantastic time to approach libraries about this. Um, so Leander, did you have something to add to that as well? Um, just be patient. I come from kind of the flip-flop side where I was seeking out entrepreneurship help because that's what I kind of wanted to delve into, but also I fall heavily, heavily under um, county government. And so I always say the Durham County Library is the child of two divorced parents, the city and the county. And sometimes they play nice with one another and sometimes I'm the child in between telling mom and dad to stop fighting. Um, so just be patient because the county, that's who I serve, that's who my check comes under, can say yes, 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 yes. And then next thing I know, the city is fighting with the county saying this doesn't serve what we need or we need more, we need more. Um, so just be patient that it may be a little bit of ball passed back and forth, even if your Leander at your local library says yes, it may be something else that you have to maneuver and do. And then also with libraries, I would always be considerate of the fact that we don't at Durham County Library specifically, we don't promote. So I will have bb and come in, but they cannot promote bb and services. And I have my bankers trained mm -hmm. to the point where they bring in other people, they'll pull their chain and say, no, Leander might kick us out. Um, just because we want to make sure that people don't feel like, well, I trust Leander, so I have to go to this bank and now open a bank account as opposed to, oh, I trust Leander. And I know this is just general information that I can take anywhere. Um, and building off of what both um, Morgan and Leander said on that point, I think my biggest lesson in 
in the library world is that there's lots of jurisdictions. And as Morgan said, they can get, um, there can be competitive nature um, between them, depending on where the overlaps exist. Um, and so just being aware of the diversity of library systems in the multi-county area that you're trying to serve, your city may have one versus your county, or they may be overlapped in the, in the case with Leander. So um, being, keeping in mind the different um, jurisdictions and, and, and then using that to, to kind of help inform, start with one maybe, and then see if you can start bridging some of those gaps between the, the multiple depending on where you're working on. This is really, really helpful in information and thank you. Is there a particular job title that we should start the discussion? I mean, or I don't wanna say particular person, but like a particular job level where we start? Yeah, start with the people you see at networking events. So most libraries are sending their public relations officer or their marketing director or their insert what they have and they're sending them to chamber meetings or school board meetings or all of those places that we need libraries to pop up and be involved. Start with that person, ask them what they think and give them room to own some of it. And if you, if you don't see that person, because in my case, it's just me, so I'm not generally everywhere, what happens is the library knows to send people to me. So if you have, if your libraries around you are doing things right now, since we, a lot of us are still closed, things like LibChat or LibAnswers, or just a general information email to say, hey, I kind of want to do this. They may have someone in place that you just haven't come in contact with that they can direct you to. Um, and I know we have something called a co-presentation form because we have a lot of interesting people who want to do a lot of interesting programs at the library. And so instead of having to talk to these people all the time, we send them to a forum and it just kind of generates, they answer questions and then that bounces to where people need to go if you're not seeing the people out in the community. Not to uh, dominate the conversation, but we have, um, one of our ecosystem members has had multiple conversations with the head director of the State Library Association. Is this a good path? Is this like, will this create distrust? I have, I have this thoughts on that. Depends on your state. Um, absolutely. Uh, and I know as outside of that, uh, you'd have to be able to read the state of the librarians in your state because uh, I would say most of the library branches in Missouri don't even know who the state librarian is, right? Because what they do is so far removed from story time. You know, that's my day to day. So it really depends on what kind of library you're trying to work with. And you might try at the same time reaching out to your state library association because they're going to have um, like the Missouri Librarians Association, they're going to have more direct contact with all of those libraries within your state. Yeah, and just to that point, Morgan, I Library associations are a little confusing because you have your state library and then you have your state library association. And so just being aware that those are two different entities. Um, and so how you, they're, they're different in how you may reach out to them. So, um, and, and again, to Morgan's point, you may not even know who your state librarian is um, because they're pretty far removed from the work that's being done on the ground level. I want to bring up a question in the chat that uh, Marcus shared, which is, how do you go about unifying the work that you do with your customers and the rest of the entrepreneurial ecosystem? Oh, Marcus, this is such a great question. Uh, so um, at, on my team, we have my role, because these roles have changed over time. We didn't start with six. Uh, my role is there to engage the partner organizations to engage the ecosystem. So the reason we do that is because uh, the Square One Economic Empowerment Team is not the competitor of SCORE. It is not the competitor of the SBDC. It's not the competitor of KC SourceLink. We are the best accessory in any of those organizations' handbags. I am your favorite lipstick because I'm bringing free data 
and data for an underserved community small business is almost like cheating, right? Because they don't, they don't have six grand to run that report. Um, people who use data with their social media in their business, oh, that's next level. And I don't want to freak anybody out, but the stuff that Leander and I can get a hold of is scary big brother deep internet stuff. And I often give people a warning when I show up to talk about it, please use this for the power of good because you could use it for the power of bad. That's how detailed it is. And I want you to use it for the power of good. So um, I have stumbled repeatedly in this. And I think the thing that is most important here is that you need to be as approachable as possible because just like any other human beings, ESOs, uh, will feel like you, you stepped into their lane, but that's what they do. Uh, and when I released uh, the thing I am most proud of, which is the stripped down business action plan workshop, uh, someone actually invited me out for Taco Tuesday and I thought we were going to eat tacos and that's not what happened. They ripped me a new one for stealing their work. So um, if you're alluding to that, the way to the only way to battle that and continue is to accept it is to listen and be open and say i i see what you're saying but when we look at the alignment of the ecosystem and what's missing here's here's my value proposition here's what's different about me than what you do and i think that if you know what i do and i know what you do then our customers are the luckiest customers in the world and you just have to accept it but that's it's repeated conversations i take my business librarian to score and ask him to tap dance twice a year because they need to be reminded that they are not data masters. They need a business librarian and we're not stealing their clients. We want them in the meeting too. But it, it, it takes a lot of attention and I call it the spinning plates because if you ignore one plate, it's going to topple over. And then that plate's going to go talk to the other plates. And this is a community that has to be managed just like your extended family has to be managed. So um, that's really where we come from that. It's you schedule it in. Just like you schedule in marketing, you got to schedule in ecosystem management for your organization. You got to get to know them. It helps a lot when you show up to their events. It helps a lot when you invite them to your events and not just to sit in the audience. When you're giving your introduction, point them out. You haven't met so and so from SCORE, you need to. And that's how we manage it. Great. Go ahead. Anybody who has a question, we have about four more minutes. So go go ahead. Laura, I see you unmuted. Go right ahead. So um, I'm an ecosystem builder. And we have had, I'd say, what you're describing as far as the organizations not playing nicely together. I, I'm in the Sacramento region. I'd say that's about where we were about six years ago, but there's been a lot of collaboration since then. So uh, everyone's ecosystem is going to be different, but I agree with you that you need to understand what the landscape is before you ask. But my question is quite specific. Uh, we've done a few things at our library um, at the invitation of the library, such as having entrepreneur pitch pitches there. I've had a tour of the maker space. They don't have an entrepreneurship center, although maybe that's in the future. But I want to collaborate with the library on putting a workshop together where um, early stage companies can learn not, what re not just what resources are available at the library for doing marketing research, but what kind of marketing research they should be doing. Um, and so I wondered if anyone has developed a curriculum for that, that they'd be willing to share. Leander, I've been terribly rude today. Do you want to take that one first? No, you can go ahead. I was, I was <laughs> somebody sent me a, a private message. I was trying to respond to their question. <laughs> um, yeah, 
there, there are lots of classes out there about that. And what's unique about the time right now is that you literally can go sit in one of them virtually. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's exactly what we're after anytime we do this. So I, I think in, in terms of wooing the library, um, is just providing them that proposal statement and then the why you want to, why you want to highlight their resources, mm -hmm. but also take the next step in um, ex showing people how that they could apply that to the work they would do. I, I don't think you're going to have much trouble with that unless someone's already making noise about it moving that direction. Oh, I'm, I'm not expecting to have trouble and the, the library is willing. I'm just looking for a shortcut to creating you know, what we would cover in the workshop from the library totally knows their resources, but they may not know as much about, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, customer yeah. discovery process. That's the piece I kind of want to overlay, help, you know, be a combination between the people who are teaching entrepreneurship and the people who are teaching you how to use the library resources. I, I think you could email either of us and mm -hmm. we would share with you what we use. Okay, that would be great. Not a problem. And this kind of goes back to the state library question because North Carolina State Library is really good about having master educators and master teachers based on the resources that they purchase because we have something, we're in a consortium where they purchase, the state library will purchase, purchase certain resources. For instance, North Carolina used to carry Simply Analytics, which I will probably be picking up and purchasing for the library because they're dropping mm -hmm. it but they would have somebody that would come out and teach this is how you search this is what you're looking for and kind of narrow it down so they may have something like that kind of packaged for you that they can send to you kind of just their notes okay thank you i want to give a shout out to my my covid partner dan i think dan smith from kansas city is in the room if he's still in here with us that that is my covid partner um, we had a discussion, oh my gosh, that first or second week, and I was like, we want to talk about our feelings as small business owners, and he, and, and SCORE doesn't want in, and SBDC doesn't want in, uh, do you want in? And he was like, we want to talk about our feelings, and we're on week 25, <laughs> of Wednesday night chat sessions um, focused on building the black economy in Kansas City. And it's been, uh, if you saw Dale Gines earlier today, he stopped by, uh, Nia Richardson has stopped by. He got um, this famous podcast host to do it. Uh, it was, it has been amazing, but it's the kind of thing that would have never started in the regular world. It only started now. So for those of you who are listening and want to build a relationship with a library, if you can find someone um, with the capacity to listen right now, it, it can be a magic time. Well, I think that that's an excellent moment to wrap things up. Um, thank you to Betsy, Leander, and Morgan. I think we got a really good insight into the asset of public libraries and of our libraries and how as ecosystem builders we can leverage this asset in so many ways that we might not have imagined.